Hi, it's Glenn O'Neill. Today is Friday, March 25th, and this is episode 11 of A Close Look at San Filippo. 10 minutes filled with five topics in the world of San Filippo syndrome and some of the work here at Cure San Filippo Foundation. As a reminder, San Filippo syndrome is a rapidly degenerative and fatal disease in children, currently with no approved cure or treatment options. First, I wanted to give you a quick update on the World Conference that happened last month in February. The World Conference is again the conference where all the scientists from around the world come together to talk specifically about lysosomal storage diseases, of which San Filippo is one. Our foundation again had an exhibit table there, uh, and this was the first time this conference was back in person after a couple of years due to COVID-19. Uh, just a great event. We were able to have some key meetings with some old partners and new ones as well. Uh, two new biotechs are thankfully entering the San Filippo space, and we were able to sat, sit down with both of those biotechs. Those biotechs are JCR Pharmaceuticals and Denali, and both of them are working in enzyme replacement programs for San Filippo Type A and closely behind that uh, San Filippo Type B. We were also able to sit down and meet with Tiga Therapeutics, Alivex, and several other industry partners. And we speak with these folks a lot throughout the year, often on Zoom meetings or phone calls, but there's nothing that takes the place of meeting these teams in person again or for the first time. Uh, and we brainstorm, we work together on the best ways to approach San Filippo to help create successful clinical trials. And to have these new biotechs interested in the San Filippo space is just huge news for us. As you may know, our community has had its share of disappointments over the past years with biotechs leaving the space. So this is really exciting. At World, we were also able to sit down with researcher Haiyan Fu from UNC Chapel Hill uh, for updates on the gene therapy program Cure San Filippo is funding there. Things are moving along and the drug production should start very soon. And the hope continues to be uh, to start a clinical trial for children with type A by the end of the year. Our chief science officer recently did a site visit earlier this month at UNC to also see the progress. At World, we were also thankful to have a new partner family uh, attend World, and we spent some really nice time with Jason and Teresa Wacker, uh, parents to Gianna, who has San Filippo type A. It was a pleasure to meet them in person and be able to make some introductions for them. They were a big help during the week, actually, and they even took over the Cure San Filippo table for me while I had some meetings to attend. So really special time. These new families make a big difference in keeping the research momentum going forward. Moving on, uh, at World, there were also two poster presentations on Cure San Filippo funded projects. One was on the education program we funded uh, to help pediatricians learn more about San Filippo and earlier diagnoses. And another was by Dr. Linda Polgreen from the Lundquist Institute, the primary investigator of the Anakinra trial. So some early results from the Anakinra trial are that 17 patients were treated at the time of the poster presentation, and 82% of those participants treated had an improvement in at least one of the outcome measures of this MDRI index, a multi-domain responder index. And this was after eight weeks of treatment with Anakinra. So far after 16 weeks, 100% of the 10 patients treated had an improvement of at least one MDRI outcome. These domains of the MDRI include sleep, behavior, pain, fatigue, movement disorders, parental stress. And we see these early results as promising signs for the treatment so far. So hopefully we're pointing to some quality of life benefits, but again, these results are really early and there's more to come. Switching topics, we're going from some positive news to some disappointing news. Abiona Therapeutics released a statement that they're going to be closing enrollment and shutting down their ABO-003 gene therapy clinical trial for type A. As a reminder, this specific study was intended for children who were over the age of two with a developmental quotient lower than 60. Some in the community were referring to this trial as the older children or the more affected trial. And to be clear, this is not the ongoing Abiona type A and type B gene therapy clinical trial which is treating children from birth to two years old or children that have a minimum developmental quotient of 60. So these are very young children, mostly pre-symptomatic. Those trials do continue. But back to the trial that was discontinued, uh, the company stated that the testing has not revealed improvement in cognitive outcomes after treatment for this group of children and that the doctors did not feel the benefit outweighed the potential risks. So based on these factors, Abiona has decided to close the study for enrollment. 
Uh, patients in the study will still have safety follow-up at their local doctor's office. So how does this information translate to our understanding of the benefit of gene therapy for San Filippo syndrome? Well, we know that the early results did indicate that the cognitive outcomes did not improve in these more affected children, but we don't know yet all the results of the study or if other aspects or symptoms of the disease were impacted by the treatment. Uh, the study tested a particular type of gene therapy at a particular dose, meaning we don't know if different versions of the gene therapy with different promoters or transgenes or different vectors or different dosing could result in more beneficial outcomes for patients in the future. It's also important to remember that this was a very, very small number of patients in this study, which limits our ability to understand how a larger group of patients might respond. And this study was designed to treat children who had already experienced significant cognitive decline due to the disease. So we can only understand the study based on how it was set up. So we don't know, for example, it can't tell us, you know, how children might do that had a slower disease progression and preserved cognitive function at later ages, how they might respond to this type of therapy. So while there are some learnings from this, there are also a lot of unknowns and areas that still need to be tested. And while it's a setback and we've had many in San Filippo in recent years, with everyone's support, with everyone's help, uh, we press forward to find effective and helpful treatments for children. Switching back to some of the positive news, some great fundraising news. Will Power, Will Byers won first place in his Woodlands Marathon and it raised over $60,000 for Cure San Filippo. I believe it's the seven year they've competed in this run. It's just truly amazing. Um, also, a new reaction video for the Help Simon campaign was released this past week, which just took off on TikTok. Over 2.4 million views brought in $65,000 in just a week. And you can see that video at Simon's TikTok at at Simon's underscore shot. So, and lots of families are continuing the grassroots fundraising from birthday fundraisers to events at restaurants and venues to some new ideas coming up like a gaming fundraiser and a kayak fundraiser. So every bit of support and effort from the families matters greatly and adds up to allow research and clinical trial work to move forward faster, actually. Um, so absolutely great job to the families and thankful to all the supporters. That can't be said enough. Finally, I want to talk about some recent foundation advocacy. Legislative and regulatory advocacy is another way to create change that benefits rare diseases like San Filippo. Cure San Filippo Foundation staff participated in Every Life Foundation's Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill just last month, which included video meetings with U.S. House representatives and senators. In the meetings, rare disease advocates like us called for Congress to take on the STAT Act and the Benefit Act. These are two important pieces of legislation that would create targeted and impactful policy reforms at the FDA, such as creating a rare disease center of excellence uh, at the FDA, actually, and also ensuring that the FDA is factoring in patient experience in its evaluation of drug development. Every Life Foundation credits the advocacy by the rare disease community during Rare Disease Week for the STAT Act and Benefit Act being included in a recent House committee hearing. This is another great example of the many avenues available to influence positive change for research on rare diseases. And we're thankful to collaborate with folks like uh, Every Life Foundation when they do these and the MPS Society. So that's my time for now. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for making the world a better place. Till next time.